What's up guys, your friendly neighborhood welder here back with another video. Today we're doing a collection update. Uh, we're going to be going through all the Blu-rays that we bought uh, these last couple months. I've got my good buddy Connor Nielsen with me back again. How you doing, man? Hey, happy to be back. I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to do this because uh, I actually don't know everything that you've bought and I don't think you know everything that I bought. Um, the reason I had Connor on with me is because we did our big, huge Criterion haul. It was kind of the first um, big video that we did on this channel besides uh, our top tens. But anyway, we did that big haul video that ended up being two videos because it was so big. Um, so I wanted to kind of just do a follow-up and talk about non-Criterion things that we bought this last couple months. So we did that in July. So this is going to be everything from August and September, at least for me. I don't know if you've bought anything in October yet. Probably not since we're just starting. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So cool. So we're going to go through August and September. Um, a lot of weird, uh, random things for, this is kind of all over the place. I don't know about you, but mine's kind of all over the place. I ended up buying a lot of things for my son these couple months because his birthday's in August. So a lot of, a lot of kids movies I'm going to get through in the beginning, but, uh, I do have some really cool stuff that I want to talk about too. So, uh, any, anything, any preamble from you about what you got this month or you just want to jump into it? Well, uh, this, we said no criterions. My first one is actually a Criterion that <laughs> oh, I bought. Oh, no, you went back again. Uh, no, I went back uh, to eBay. I got uh -huh. this on eBay the month of the sale, and it did not arrive until after we had shot oh. those videos. So. Okay. Well, that counts. That's totally fine. No worries. Um, but cool, yeah. I've got everything from Goodwill purchases to, like, <laughs> $200 box sets. So this is going to be all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and start and then we're just going to go back and forth. Um, I'm going to right out the gate mention two big things, but I've already talked about these on the channel quite a bit. So I just wanted to, uh, but they did get them in August. So these two sets, the, uh, the volume two of the wonderful worlds of Ray Harryhausen set. I haven't talked to you about this yet. Um, I think you, you saw the video, but yeah, so this set is awesome. I was hunting for this set for a long time. I had the volume one back there, but uh, I could not find volume two. So I'm so very glad that I found a good deal on this one. And then the exact same day from the same seller, I also found this one. He was selling both of them. Not a lot of people found out about them. So I was able to swoop in before the auction was over and get a good price on both of these. So there's three movies in each of these. There's First Men in the Moon, Jason and the Argonauts, and The Mysterious Island. And then there is, this is obviously the Sinbad trilogy. So you've got The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, and Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. So, still have not got a chance to watch these yet, so that's a bummer, but I do eventually am going to sit down and do a big Ray Harryhausen watch through, so I'm glad I have these on the shelf, because they don't stream anywhere very often. I have not found these streaming, so I'm really glad to have these in Blu-ray on the shelf. Those are so beautiful. <laughs> the unboxing video you did of that second set had me so jealous. I love the artwork on that. I have not seen any of those films, but I really want to. I know, man. I, I, I'm, I, I, it's embarrassing that I haven't seen them yet because I own them all right here and it's been two months now and I still haven't had a chance. But now we've got Halloween coming up and I've been doing a whole uh, October list that I'm trying to get through and then pretty soon I'll have a Christmas list. So I don't even know if I'm going to get to those before, probably not before 2022. So it's a shame, but I'm going to, I promise. <laughs> make, make it a Thanksgiving sort of, Maybe sort so. of watch through. Maybe. Maybe so. Hit it up in November. So my first, the criterion to get that out of the way, is the 1992 Best Picture nominee, directed by James Ivory, Howard's End. This was out oh. of print. I got this on eBay. It cost more than the $20 it would have cost if it were imprint and you got it in July. But I got an okay price on this as far as this going uh, out of... Well, it's not going out of print. It is out of print. As far as out of print titles go, I was okay with what I spent on this. So I'm excited to actually watch this. It has a cast that is pretty impressive. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter sort of came... Oh, wow. She was sort of discovered by... James Ivory with stuff like uh, A Room with a View, which came out in the mid to late 80s. Uh, but this also has Anthony Hopkins, Emma Thompson, Helena Bonham Carter, and Vanessa Redgrave. 
so I want to give that a shot, especially after watching The Father. I just have more of an interest in checking out Anthony Hopkins' acting. So that is my first pick. That is beautiful. I love the white and gold, too, with the, with the Me monochromatic. Me, too. The, the spine is really cool. Uh, the gold really does stand out. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't have any criteria that look like that. I like that. Um, this is a weird... I don't know if you know what this is. Um, this is a movie from 1960, I believe. It is called The Great Race. Have you heard of this? I think I have. The that Great has Race. Jack yep. Lemmon in it? Yes, it does. And... Uh, we are both on a, I, I'm kind of on a Jack Lemmon kick, I guess, because I just watched The Apartment recently, which is amazing, and uh, he's awesome in that. Completely different performance here. He is a literally mustache-twirling cartoon character in this. Uh, he plays, like, the, like, snidely whiplash-esque villain in this, uh, and there's, like, this Renaissance man, just can do everything hero. This is, like, the, the closest thing I've ever seen, with the exception of maybe the 80s Popeye movie uh, to a live action cartoon like it's it's absolutely insane like it the movie opens with uh, the main guy doing this crazy stunt where he like jumps out of a he's like dangling from a hot air balloon in a straight jacket and he has to like escape and uh, and the other guy like shoots down the hot air balloon and it's just like them going back and forth doing crazy stunts like then it goes right into the villain Jack Lemon guy doing this airplane stunt and there's just a bunch of cool crazy stunts like that and it, it culminates with them doing this great race from like new york to paris or something it's like an insane it's it's a really weird bonkers it's like somewhere in between around the world in 80 days uh, which is another great movie that i wish i had it's the best picture movie but there's no, still no blu-ray for it which makes me <laughs> so I've, I've settled. For, I've settled for the DVD on that one, unfortunately. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to do that. I have it in my wish list on eBay f forever now because I'm just gonna have to, to suck it up and buy that DVD. But I really like that movie. This is not as good as that, obviously. But um, it's somewhere between that and like it's a mad, 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 mad world. Uh, it's just this really crazy, fun, uh, just race movie, I guess. And I watched it with my son, and uh, it's funny. I like movies that can make my two year old laugh. So. Oh. It made him laugh quite a bit whenever they would crash into things. So, I don't know. It's a fun little movie. Um, so, I got that off eBay. I know a lot of people who grew up loving that movie. If I'm not mistaken, Tony Curtis plays the main character of that, right? Yes. Tony Curtis and Natalie Wood is the main female lead. And uh, and then Jack Lemmon plays the, the main villain. And then he also plays another role, which is like this weird, wacky, super over-the-top, um, like king that they run into on their adventure uh, and it's it's like a twin situation where they like switch places this movie's ridiculous but I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit there's polar bears there is there is like this huge action set piece where they go to like this western town and they like there's like this crazy western fight like with people smashing beer bottles and all of the whole house is like falling down with the railings and the steps and everything like there's musical numbers like it's it's got it all it's it's a it's a fun it's a fun romp <laughs> sounds like sure. my kind of movie i should probably <laughs> finally check that out yeah i mean you might like it man it's pretty cool and it's two of the three leads from uh some like it hot teaming up again which is one of my favorite comedies so i need I to check that it still. out oh you would really really like that it's it is a comedy that is made and written like an actual movie like it's actually very <laughs> smartly written movie that happens to be a very very funny comedy and made with a lot of style so check it out sweet those are my favorite kinds of comedies actual movie comedies <laughs> as i've said before but uh but cool I, I mean that is um they have a like a whole collection of his movies on the criterion channel that's where i watched the apartment um who's the director of those again billy wilder billy Wilder. yeah they have a billy wilder section right now with like five of his movies and I've been wanting to get through but yeah like I said there's just so much to watch but I definitely want to want to check that one out soon uh, my next one like I said I got a lot of children's movies uh, this month because it was my son's birthday his birthday is in August and uh, I found this one and actually the next one too I'll get to but I found this one at half price books for really cheap and I had never seen it but we had been we have been going through all of the Wallace and Gromit movies um, 
this this last two months, a couple last couple months. I had never seen any of the Wallace and Gromit movies, um, so we watched through all of those with him, and then we also just well, yesterday or the day before, the beginning of October, we just watched the um, the Halloween kind of one. What's it called? Curse of the Were Rabbit, uh, the first full length. Wallace and Gromit one. So we've been hip deep in those, and this is also in that universe. This is Shaun the Sheep, um, which I've not seen. Uh, this is the only one I haven't seen yet, but I got this for him last month for his birthday, and uh, it looks fun. It's one. This sheep uh, shows up in like one of the shorts, one of the four Wallace and Gromit shorts, and then they spun it off into this movie, if I'm correct about that. So I do want to check this out. This is a full length movie, um, and it has. A lot of high praise for this. I know it was critical. Was this one of the best picture nominees that year? I think it might have been nominated for animated picture. I want to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have to be uh, because the sequel was nominated as well last year. Okay. And typically, they if if a sequel is nominated, that means the first one was also nominated. That's just me kind of staring daggers at the Academy <laughs> for the Lego movies and not nominating them. So, <laughs> so yeah, I haven't checked that out yet, but I do want to watch that soon. So that is, that's the next one on my list. Right on. So this next one is sort of an ongoing joke with my brother and I. I, I just need to explain that for why I picked this up. <laughs> I got the 4K of Howard the Duck. Oh no, why would you do such a thing? I upgraded. <laughs> there is a lot of lore to the reason behind this that I will go a little bit into. One year there was a a friend of mine who had, who was trying, I say friend, not really. He was trying to get with my girlfriend at the time's best friend. So when my girlfriend threw me a surprise party, which I'd never had before... It was really cool of her. She, uh, this this guy had given Spencer and I as a present a DVD of Howard the Duck, and then had gotten my girlfriend and my girlfriend's friend like some nice wine for thanking them for hosting the party or whatever. And it was very obvious what was going on there. And so just to to spite him, I said, "Well, I feel." insulted i wasn't really insulted but I, I i pretended i was insulted so i got the blu-ray of howard the duck to to supplant the the dvd and now to <laughs> further bury it i got howard the duck <laughs> so uh the 4k of howard the duck so i actually popped this sucker into my 4k player and watched a little bit of it um the meme is real guys uh, <sighs> this thing looks amazing no joke, one of the 10 best 4K discs I've ever seen. It looks incredible. And I can't really explain it. The level of detail, the colors when he goes back to Leah Thompson's apartment, the the rain on her window, there is so much detail in this. I was kind of shocked. I've never actually <laughs> seen this movie, so I, I was thoroughly impressed by how this looked and the presentation. So I'm probably going to keep it, and I'm probably going to finish watching it at some point. If nothing else, it is the first Marvel movie. Mm. And it always will be. <laughs> I have not seen that either, so I can't even throw any shade, but I'm pretty confident I would not care for it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let me see what's my next one here. So you this. This uh, was what I just mentioned. Two of the movies I got my son for his birthday was Shaun the Sheep. And I found a Half Price Books, and I also found this at Half Price Books for, like, super cheap. Both these were, like, $5. Clyde of the Chance of Meatballs too. Uh, which I also have not seen, um, but I did see the first one, and I did like that one. So I thought, and I did remember there was like a bunch of animal puns in the trailer uh, that was funny, so I hope I like this one. If not, my son will probably like it. And I was also just in the mood for some more uh, Lord and Miller, because I had just watched, I don't know if you've seen Mitchell's vs. the Machines yet? Not watched yet. that earlier this year. It is amazing. It's really. I know they didn't direct that, they just produced it, but... It feels like their thing. So I was kind of in the mood for this. So I saw this one on sale, and then I went on Amazon and bought this one. It's the first one. So I got both of these. This was also 5 bucks on Amazon. It's super cheap. Um, I remember liking this when it came out, so hopefully it holds up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show these two to my son. I'm sure he'll love them. They're fun. I maintain that Lord and Miller should just be in charge of Hollywood. 
because <laughs> even when they don't direct a movie, when they produce, they know who to put on mm-hmm. those movies and how their sensibilities enhance the story, whether it's Spider-Verse, whether it's, uh, I guess, The Mitchells versus The Machines. I know whenever I Great. see something they have produced or have had a significant hand in bringing to the screen I always have a very good time and even if I don't love it I do respect it and admire it more than normal movies that don't impress me all that much so mm-hmm. oh my my next one was another 4k upgrade I never owned this before I have seen it it is blade on 4k oh so this yeah, has... I know you went in on the 4Ks this month. I'm jealous of all the 4Ks that you got. Yes, I did primarily get this so that, well, first of all, you know, I wanted to get it while it still had a slope cover. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. But so I wanted... I. Yes, Guilty. well, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm actually upset about one of mine because I didn't know there was a slip. It, it didn't come with a slip cover. I bought it directly from the source and it, it must be a second run or something. Anyway, I'll talk about it when I get there. <laughs> but... Blade 2 is directed by Guillermo del Toro, and I love mm-hmm. Guillermo del Toro. I like Blade 2 a little bit more than Blade 1. I don't think this is a bad movie, but I also don't think it's a particularly great movie either. But it does have a lot of cool scenes. The 4K transfer on this is pretty good. I like the uh, color grading. I think that there is a few instances of DNR that kind of hold it back from a lot of really impressive detail, but as far as the lights and shadows... Uh, highlights and all that it does look quite excellent and the big scenes that people want to watch from this do stand out Uh, so pretty all right 4k disc and a pretty all right movie the special effects obviously don't hold up but yeah i was gonna say those can't look great in 4k (laughs) oh what are you talking about the little skull things that come out of (laughs) they look they look every bit as uh, amazing as i'm sure they always have (laughs) All right, my next one. Speaking of tangentially related to Phil, and, uh, for, to Lord and Miller, um, it's the Lego Ninjago movie. <laughs> so, story behind this: um, I've not seen any of the Lego movies. I know, I'm a horrible human being, um, but <laughs> but I do own them. I own the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie. They're right back there on my shelf um, because I found them at Half Price Books at one point for five dollars each and i was like i'm gonna watch these eventually and judah will love them which is my son so um i got both of those and this was also for five dollars at cd warehouse and i was like i heard it's not as good as those ones but i'm sure kids will love it and i already have those two so maybe i'll just get this one and eventually i guess i'll get lego movie two. so i almost have this whole line and i haven't seen any of them but uh it was cheap and uh and i and and it's not the slipcover amazingly at a used store and it's in pretty good shape so I got this. I know I need to see the Lego movie. I'm sorry. I haven't seen... Our mutual friend uh, is a huge fan of that movie. And that's. I think that's partially why I haven't seen it is because everyone I know says it's like a spiritual experience. And I know I can't possibly have that now because it's been talked up so much. So I want some distance from it until I can kind of... I don't know. I'll never get it. Like I wish I had seen it before I heard anything about it because I would have that fresh experience. But... um, I know I'll never get that again, but I think if I get some distance from it and I just watch it, I think I'll I'll probably enjoy it better than than going into it expecting the second coming of Christ. So this is just the Lego Ninjago movie. Um, that's it. And then this this one is probably the weird. This not probably this is definitely the weirdest thing that I'm going to show today. Uh, looking at Goodwill, um, never really shopped. I never really looked at Blu-rays or DVDs at Goodwill, mostly because I only collect Blu-rays and I never see Blu-rays at um at uh at goodwills but this goodwill had a surprisingly large selection of blu-rays didn't get a blu-ray this is actually a dvd but the blu-rays brought me to the section and then i looked through it and i found this bizarre thing that i wanted to show only because when i did my top 10 fantasy movies with uh, austin that video that we that we posted a few weeks ago i talked about the first narnia adaptations from the bbc with the horrifying beaver man and the six like the six foot beaver costume this is not that one this is not the lion the witch in the wardrobe but i did find the prince caspian and the voyage of the dawn treader of those and i have never seen any of these i saw the 
the BBC Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe at school as a kid, um, but I've never seen any of the other ones, so I do want to check this out at some point. It's I, There's never going to be a Blu-ray for it, so I said I might as well just pay $2 for the Goodwill DVD. <laughs> so I picked that up. There's a dragon. Uh, I'm assuming that's from The Voyage of the Dawn Treader because there's a dragon in that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like Narnia. It's probably not great, but it could be a fun a fun watch. So that's, that's, that's I what, owned that's all of those when I was a kid. Oh, awesome! I loved the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We had to read that in first grade, yeah. and my teacher's husband was playing Aslan in a stage production of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So when we finished reading the book, we got to go see that stage production of it, which was really cool. And then oh, the movie came out around, uh, you know, a few years after that. Yeah, totally so fine. that was that was awesome. And uh, because of that, I I said I want the Narnia movies for for Christmas. And then a relative got me the BBC Narnia movies, <laughs> which was mildly disappointing. But I I never read any of the other books, so I watched those, and I don't really remember anything about them beyond scary beaver costumes but i remember in the <laughs> silver you. i'm so glad you can sympathize with me that thing was horrifying yeah it, it was i thought that <laughs> giant beaver was gonna eat lucy because <laughs> i mean it looks like he could so the but i do remember in the silver chair when one of the characters turns into a snake i remember it as somebody standing up in a sna- in like one part of a <laughs> snake costume so it's like this really wide snake with a frozen expression on its face, face just kind of shaking in place while the rest of it is just sort of dangling around the the, awesome. the floor. It was hilarious. Like, even as a kid, that didn't even scare me. I thought it was hilarious. That's amazing. Okay. Made potential future video, now that I know you have a connection to this, we might have to track down the rest of these and do commentaries on these at some point. Let's do it. Be Let's hilarious. do it. I have not seen the rest of them, but um, but I think those would make for great, hilarious commentaries on the channel. That w- um, I mean, they would basically be blind <laughs> for me, too. I barely remember anything about those. That's so cool that you had a connection to those. I never would have thought that. Um, next on my list is a movie I really like. I know a lot of people, especially my age, love this movie. I've never kind of felt that, but I've always really enjoyed it, and I always like showing it to people because... Whenever I show it to people, they love it more than I do. <laughs> and that is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Oh, I just watched that on Netflix recently. Yeah. Oh, did you? Cool. Uh, I like this. It has a murderer's row of millennial actors who, right after this, would blow up. Obviously, it has Michael Sarah, who, which, who was, this was basically the end of his star. Yeah, I was going to say, and... it's the opposite for him. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> but it has Mary Elizabeth Winstead, obviously... Uh, but Aubrey Plaza, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Chris Evans, what's her face? Captain Brie Larson, Brie Larson, Anna Superman. Kendrick, uh, Anna Kendrick, which uh, stole my heart when I first watched this. I was like, who is that lady? <laughs> and Mae Whitman's in this, who was a child actress. Uh, she's on Arrested Development. She was in the original Independence Day. Yeah, she's in this. A murderer's row of excellent actors. It's a lot of fun. It's sort of how I describe it. I describe this movie as millennial expressionism, where there's a lot of people expressing their thoughts, but everyone's sort of kind of... like There's this level of irony that everyone sort of presents in order to not appear sincere, because sincerity is some... I don't know. It's people who are just a few years older than me I see a lot of this in them. I'm at the tail end of the millennia, millennial generation just before the Gen Z cutoff. So I have a little bit of distance from the people in this movie, but I get it. I understand why people love this movie so much. And it's a lot of fun. Edgar Wright is a great director, obviously. Oh, yeah. 4K does not look as great as you might think. But that's mostly because it already looked excellent. I think yeah. this... Don't quote me on this. I think it was a 2K digital intermediate that they finished it at anyway so it's not like they could really do much as far as resolution but obviously the colors and everything look awesome in this movie because it's a good looking movie so yeah that's scott pilgrim versus the world i kind of had the same thing you do with that um the first time this last time i watched it i liked it a lot more um but the first time i watched it i was always like the kid who was like I don't know. I didn't like the kids that were like 
ironic about everything, you know, that were always cynical about everything. And that's kind of the people in this. So that's why everyone, not saying blanket statement, but a lot of people relate to that because of that. And I was always like, I don't know, I always liked more sincere things. So when I originally saw that, I really, I wouldn't say didn't like it. I enjoyed it the first time, but I wasn't crazy about it like everybody else was. But I was kind of resisting that more. But now that I'm older, I can like it a little bit more. Um, so I did enjoy it more the second time I watched I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, no, but... I, I agree. <laughs> and uh, I will say it's about a guy learning to become more sincere and then yeah. move past that part of his life. But you do have to deal with everyone being that way for the entire movie. So <laughs> <laughs> Literally everyone. So, yeah. So I definitely liked it a lot better the second time I watched it recently. Um, How did she like it? I showed it? it to my wife, too. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Um she enjoyed it, I think. I think she may have seen it before, but we watched it together this time. Because um, that was before I met her. That was 2010. Um, but my next two are two holiday releases. Um, this I also found at CD Warehouse. This first one is a movie that I've never seen. Like that, it's a cult classic. A lot of people love this movie. I have not seen it yet. It's Hocus Pocus. Uh, my wife is one of the people that grew up watching this movie and she wanted to own it and it was like four dollars at cd warehouse so I was, I was like go ahead you can get it it's fine um, not that i have to give my wife permission she wanted to buy it she could buy it <laughs> so <laughs> this collection is not just mine it's some of, a lot of these are my wife's too so she bought this one i've never seen it i will let you know i'm sure i will probably maybe see it this month since it's october so i don't know if you have any connection to this movie i know you're younger so you probably don't. <laughs> Look, there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who love Hocus Pocus <laughs> and those who hate Hocus Pocus. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I think I might be in the middle. I don't, I don't, probably because my wife is watching it with me. I probably won't actively hate it as much as I would if I, as if I was with <laughs> a group of, of other people. But um, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I will hate it. Maybe I will hate it. Just a spider. I'll just say I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> But that's me. I know. I know there are a lot of people who love it, and I don't want to take anything away from the people who do. Yeah, and I have. That's what I. That's all I know about it is that there's a lot of people that love it, and most of the people that I know don't love it. So I'm going in with that mindset already. So maybe I should try to just get that out of my head and just watch it and have fun. Hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. That's focus focus. So that's the Halloween movie, and then this one is the Christmas movie. Um, I love Christmas Carol. It's one of my favorite stories and i try to watch all the versions i can this is one version i haven't seen yet this is the george c scott 1984 version um i've seen the 38 version i've seen a lot of the newer versions like the jim carrey version and the you know the muppets version the mickey version all, all the versions but this is a pretty famous one that i have not seen yet so i'm definitely going to sit down and watch this one this year um I don't really know much about it, but I mean, I know the entire story because it's Christmas Carol and it's always the same and I've seen a bunch of them. So I'm excited to check that one out and see if what I think about this one and to see if this is a, a good Scrooge. I don't know. I think the 38 version is probably still my favorite so far. We'll see if this one can, can topple it. I don't know. If I do love George C. Scott and I hear that is one of the best ones. Don't quote me on that, but I think I hear a lot of people really talk that one up as far as yeah. more recent renditions of that that's kind of the idea i got uh, about it too from what i've heard so i'm looking forward to checking it out well my next pick is one of my favorite filmmakers definitely his worst movie but there is a another adaptation of this property coming to the screen very recently and so that means the original gets a 4k it's dune baby it's oh. dune that is beautiful. Is that Arrow? This comes to us from the wonderful people at Arrow. I got this. This thing is awesome. So, so it comes with no Blu-ray. It's just the 4K. And oh. so obviously, uh, because it is Arrow, this has a reversible jewel case art. So I have it right now looking like the theatrical release poster. And... The box, though, has this really cool new artwork with the sandworm. Yeah, and that's awesome. That is what the other side of this uh, little insert in the jewel case looks like. It has cool. two discs. Both are... One is a 4K of just the movie with a lot of bonus features. And then you have an entire disc of bonus features on a Blu-ray. So you have art cards, uh, lobby, not art cards, lobby cards of 
posters, promotional stuff. Um, very neat. And you also get this double-sided poster, which is both of the artwork. I believe that is. Yeah, that's one side of it. And then Jeez. the other side. And then lastly, this wouldn't be a boutique release of a David Lynch film if it did not have is a that... bunch of essays. Wow. That's thick. Yes. I thought that was yes. a script. It's so thick. It is. It has one, two, three, four, five essays in it. That fifth. Well, I guess not essays. It has five pieces of writing in this. One of which is an archival interview with the sound effects designer. One is a chapter of the book Lynch on Lynch, which I think I might own almost all of because the chapters <laughs> from that book are always included in the Criterion releases of Blue Velvet, Mulholland Drive, etc. And then there are a bunch of new pieces about the mood, about its legacy, about its music. And yes, this has even has the original. Uh, you've read the book, right? I read the book. I've not seen that movie. I need to. I don't know. I, I'm gonna ask you. You, you go ahead. keep going. I have a question. Afterwards. Well, so you know how there's an there's a there's an index in the Dune novel which tells you what the terminology of yes. the world is. <laughs> yes. This includes the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very needed, probably, from what I've heard yes. about that movie. <laughs> uh, apparently, at the theater, they gave you a this pamphlet. Uh, not oh, well, not with obviously all of this, but in the theater they gave you the terminology of Dune and they gave you some information about the history of it because you know that's it's a very so dense cool. book and they tried they should to do that it. at the new. I hope they do that at the new one. That would be awesome, <laughs> and you can like hold on to it and keep it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's that's Dune. What was your question? Um, should I? Do you think I should watch that one before I watch the new one, or should I just go in with my book knowledge? Well, and watch that one later. I do want to watch it eventually. This is this is a pretty faithful adaptation for the most part of the book, just the literal events of the book on screen, for good or ill, uh, for <laughs> boredom or not. For <laughs> there, there are specific liberties taken with how they interpret certain things, like Paul's visions that he starts to develop after. Uh, something bad happens to his family. So there, there is some fun stuff with that, but and the ending, of course, is very different. But I don't know. Uh, if you already read the book, I think you're good. You can watch this if you want to before the new one. I haven't seen the new one, so I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like this movie. It's my... Okay, so you know how a lot of people... I know this is not you, but a lot of people <laughs> like Spider-Man 3, even though it's not very good, but they like the first two Spider-Mans and they yeah they get, just like going back to that world and they they like they like Sam Raimi and so even if it's not great they still get something out of it this is Spider-Man 3 for me like it's just as poorly structured as Spider-Man 3 uh or maybe Spider-Man 3 is even more poorly structured than this movie but it's not good uh it's a director where you can just as the movie goes on you can see it getting out of his hands and he loses control of it <laughs> as it continues David Lynch is embarrassed by this. He says it is the only artistic venture he has ever disappointed that he's ever made that he is ever embarrassed about. Um, but I like it. It's wow, weird. That's a, it's that's, it, <laughs> that's high that, praise to be able to say that. Yeah, there's a lot of artistic endeavors I've been done that I'm very embarrassed about. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, I and, and I think the music of this movie rocks. So whatever. Cool. It's weird. I really like it. It's the worst David Lynch movie but I'm very proud to own it on 4K. And I think the people at Arrow really outdid themselves with this. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you got it, man, because I know, obviously, you're a huge David Lynch fan, so that's uh, that's glad that you were able to get that in such a nice, high-quality uh, edition. Um, next up, two more kids' movies, and I promise the kids' movies are about to end, <laughs> but um, the next one, these are, a lot of adults love these, too. These are, these are great movies in general. Uh, I'm going to show these two together. Actually, I'll show this one first. I came across this completely unaware at Target. Didn't know they were re-releasing these, but this is Coraline. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about these Leica re-releases that they're doing. It says, newly restored and full of exciting new bonus features. So they, they went back and like 
did a better restoration of them somehow. Um, so I don't know. I'm excited. I didn't own this yet. And I also didn't own this next one yet, which is Paranorman. So I got these two. They look really cool. They have slips and they all match. Uh, they also have, they did four of them. They did these two, they did Kubo, and they did the Box Trolls. And Kubo has a nice red banner at the top and Box Trolls has purple. So they look really good on the shelf. I already own those two. So I probably won't double dip unless these just look amazing and I have to have the newly uh, restored versions. But I'm excited to check these out. These are both kind of, Halloween -y movies. That's why I got these two specifically because I want to watch them this month. Maybe with my son. Maybe not. I don't know. These are really creepy movies. So I don't know if he's ready for these yet. He's only three at the moment. But um, especially Coraline. I haven't. This is the only Leica movie I haven't seen, which is Paranorman. So I'm excited to check that one out. Uh, they didn't do a newly restored version of what's the fifth one? It's uh, the Bigfoot one. Missing Link. Yes. I'm assuming that one was too new and they couldn't restore it or else they just wanted to do these four. I don't know what the reasoning is, but they only did these four. Um, so yeah, check those out. If you're into these movies and you don't own them yet, or you would you like a newer version? Uh, these are on, um, like I said, I got this one at Target and then I found this one on Amazon and they have the same slips sealed and everything. So they're only 15 bucks. So check them out. Pretty cool. So Leica is a Portland based Ooh. animation studio. Got to give them a shout out. So a little, little bit of local pride, <laughs> obviously. Coraline, funny story about that. My little brother was four years old when my mother took my twin brother and I to see it with our little brother. I was not four. I was much older than that. But I remember when the other mother pulls out the buttons, <laughs> my little brother stood up and just walked out of the theater. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. It's like, the, it's like a meme. You can make a perfect meme out of that, which is... Like, oh, that's hilarious. It was hilarious. And then even afterwards, my mom had to... Obviously, my mom was like, where did... My son just got up. I should probably... Get, and my mom said, it's just a movie. And my little brother said, I'm not watching that. But three years <laughs> later, my little brother had... Because I think Paranorman came out in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. And around that time, my little brother was really into old horror movies. Like The Phantom of the Opera, Nosferatu like old silent yeah. movies he loved uh the universal stuff he loved that stuff and to this day i will always regret not taking him to go see paranorman because i know that is about a kid who is a bit macabre likes death or he sees ghosts or something like that and i when i saw the preview for paranorman i thought that that's a levi movie i need to take <laughs> levi to go see that and i never did and i i always have regretted that i still have not seen paranorman it is it is about a kid if I if I remember correctly it's about a kid who likes those old movies and like makes his own short films right oh or am I, I mixing I didn't that even know that much yeah I it's... may be mixing this with Frank and Weenie I do not know um, I we watched that one last year for Halloween and we started watching Paranorman but it was a little too much for my son so or I thought it was so I stopped it um, I may be mixing those two movies together that might be Frank and Weenie I don't know they're very similar they both have green covers and they both <laughs> and came out both, in 2012 and they're both about a little awkward kid who like doesn't have any friends and it's spooky so I may be completely wrong about that but I know one of those movies is about that so he might like Frank and Weenie your brother maybe maybe <laughs> All right, what's up? What's your next one? Next one, this will just be a quick one. Uh, the Warner Brothers recently did a 4K restoration of The Shawshank Redemption. One of the best movies ever, one of the most popular movies ever. It's great. I love it. And this restoration is beautiful. It's really good. I got nothing else to say. It's awesome. <laughs> what else can you say? All right, we're, we're going from Leica to Luca. This is my hey. next one. Uh, this is a great movie. I've already seen this twice. This just came out um, this year. And uh, we watched it on Disney Plus when it came out. And then uh, my son wanted to watch it again uh, when we bought it. So we watched it again. And I had to get it. Uh, I'll show these. I actually might show three this time. Just because these all go together. Um, these are the Disney... Disney released, this is obviously a Pixar movie, but you know how they always do the the nice, thick digipacks that they've been doing for probably about five years, at least five years now. I, I think I have them all the way back going to before Endgame. I think um, 
Homecoming was a little different because it was a Sony release, but I think Ragnarok right after that was the first Marvel one that they did. So I have those all going all the way all the way back. A little bummed, though, and disappointed, and I'm going to air my grievances with Disney. Probably a budget cut, probably necessary because nobody's buying movies anymore and everything's on Disney+, Plus. but they no longer have the slips. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you what it is. First of all, we got Luca, um, and then we also got Ray and the Last Dragon. I love this movie. I liked it a lot. Um, I did not like this that much. I thought it was okay. It was all right. It's a, it's a, it's a Disney princess movie. Um, so Ray and the Last Dragon and Luca, we both got we got both of those. My wife uh, wanted to pick this up for sure, especially because if you don't get these, and I'll illustrate that with this next one, if you don't get these right away, these are gone and they're like very expensive on eBay. If you want to, these are the Target exclusives. I'm all over the place. These are the Target exclusives. I haven't even said that yet, but that's what I've been talking about this whole time. So I got these two, which I haven't even opened yet, but they're exactly the same as this one. I also got this one. And this is also the Target exclusive. If you know what the Target exclusives are normally like, they're normally this beautiful digipack. I wish I would've got one down to show you. But they're usually this digipack that folds out like twice and it has all the discs laid out and there's artwork on each one and all that folds up and then a slip cover goes over top of it. I don't know if you have any of these, but they're, they're really nice and I like what they've been doing with those. But these are not that. They've, they've completely revamped how they've done this, probably to cut on costs, but it is just a slip cover. It's not a digipack. It's just a slip cover with a normal standard 4K in it. And the slip cover itself has a fold out thing on the front, which just has a little booklet in it. So it's not a digipack at all. It has that little booklet. And this is not this is just not a good a good design. You can see it's peeling off. The glue right there is peeling off because you've got this heavy book inside a flap that's hanging off the front of a slip cover, which is just a flimsy slip cover. So all this weight from this book is just pulling down on that every time you open it. I don't like this. I'm not a fan of, of these new ones. And now I have three of them. I didn't know that. You can't tell when they're sealed. I mean, I guess I could have if I really investigated it but what I thought it was was just the digipack and they weren't pr printing the slip covers anymore I thought they were maybe just cutting costs and not printing the slip covers just to save a little bit but it's actually a completely different different packaging so this is the Black Widow one um, if you can see mine is pretty beat up um, I kind of told Connor about this because it really it really hurt my feelings but um, we ordered this from the Target website because Every Target around me was completely sold out. I don't know what it is with this movie. I don't know if they didn't print many of them because of the lawsuit or whatever, but, like, every Target in, like, we have, like, five or six Targets around us, and I checked, like, all of them, and none of them had any. I had to go online, and there was only one left on Target.com, like, the website. Oh <laughs> Target's website. There was only one left, and we, we ordered one. And, um, which is why I couldn't, like, get mad at them or complain or send it back because it came all beat up because there was no more. So if I wanted the Target exclusive, this is all I had. And then they're like, there was, there's like two on eBay at the time and they were like 60 bucks already. So I was like, okay, I'm not paying that much. I don't even like this movie that much. My wife wanted to get it. So, so I just said, fine. She had some, some Target um, money, some Target credit. So it only cost us like 20 bucks instead of like the 35 sticker price. So we picked it up, they shipped it in just an envelope, like not even a bubble wrapped envelope, just an envelope. And it came and I was, as soon as I saw it on, the, on my front porch, I was like, that's gonna be so smashed. Why did they do that? <laughs> so, and I opened it and I was like, oh, I was so mad. I wanted to ship it back, but uh, it's not that bad. It's, it's horrible for me because I'm such a collector, but I mean, the, the, the corners are, are smushed and uh, I, it makes me cringe inside, but it's okay. Um, and then I've got, so yeah, so I've got those three. Those are all the, you know, the Disney, the Pixar, and the Marvel release from the first half of this year. So those are all on the shelf. They look good on the shelf. I'm not crazy about the packaging. Sorry, I went on way longer than I meant to about those, but <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of those. I know you've seen Black Widow, but um, but yeah, there's those three. Oh yeah, um, I guess I should say, I did get Black Widow on 4K. I didn't put that on my, on my, uh, oh. my, my stack, um, but I got it. 
Um, I also don't really care much for the movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, except for the shots where Johansson, Pew, and Weitz are on screen at the same time. Then it's the best movie that's ever been made. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I do think, though, that w- with the other two, they were on Disney+. Plus, and this is just going to a whole thing. If you put your movie on streaming, I won't watch it. It's not a principal thing. <laughs> it's just a mad... I don't even know what it is. It's just the thought that it's always going to be there. I don't I don't need to get to it right now. And yeah. you put enough of that back to back to back. I still have not watched that Chris Hemsworth movie, Extraction, from last year. That's when there were no movies. Like, at all. And I still didn't watch it. You know what I mean? Like, I, Yeah. Isn't there a I, sequel coming out already? I guess, If there is... <laughs> I, oh, I'm pretty oh. sure there's a sequel. <laughs> That Netflix just announced that they're da dum that they just did. Uh, did you see that? They did no, a press. I, uh, uh, they did a whole like DC fandom event. Then they called it da dum because that's the sound it makes when you log into Netflix. Did they really call? <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is real. <laughs> <laughs> they they announced. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad I could break the news to you. Yeah, they announced they they showed trailers for Stranger Things season four and. Um, uh, Cobra Kai season four. They showed a lot of stuff. Yeah, you should look it up. <laughs> well, you don't watch streaming stuff, so I guess it wouldn't interest you. <laughs> um, I watched Soul back when that dropped because it's a Pete Doctor movie. That hurt. Um, but that's I, the I one that's the one Pixar movie I haven't seen, and it's that same thing where it's like it came out just and I I have the same thing kind of where I'm like, and it doesn't make any sense. Right? I don't know what it is. It's just like I have no immediate need to check it out. It's gonna be there, and then I just get caught up watching other things and I could forget to go back to it. I still have not seen Soul. It's a shame. Yeah, and uh, that's the same thing for Luca. And I think Riot and the Last Dragon, I live in Portland, so COVID restrictions are a little tighter here, I know, than a lot of other places in the country. So no theater was open while that was doing a theatrical run. So the only way I could oh. watch it was um, if it came to Disney Plus, and then it did. And I still haven't watched it. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, that's where I saw it. My next one, I have been on a bit of a Clint Eastwood kick with Cry Macho coming out. That is his 40th directorial effort. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of movies in my blind spots. So I've seen some of Eastwood's more recent stuff, like American Sniper, Richard Jewell, The Mule, and uh, The 1517 to Paris. That's the one that's really, really bad. You don't need to see that one. But I went back and watched some of his older stuff, and Kino Lorber has actually been having a lot of... They put out a lot of his stuff on uh, these remastered Blu-rays that are pretty good. I watched High Plains Drifter, but I bought that a while back. I watched Play Misty for Me, which I got a while back. But they also have The Iger Sanction, which is his fourth film. I've not seen it, and I will probably check it out because... Even with early Eastwood, I like him as an actor. He's a movie star, right? He's always kind of playing himself or a different version of himself or a subversion of his persona or something. And, you know, that's a kind of acting style we just don't really get anymore. And Clint Eastwood is probably the oldest living movie star right now. <laughs> so it's just been kind of a bit of a, um, a an interesting educational thing for me. And also Clint Eastwood just reminds me a lot of my grandpa who recently passed away. I say recently, it's been like a whole year, but um, I don't know. It's just something that's cool. I hear this one's not great, but it's a sort of James Bond, Jack of all trades kind of action movie. And you know what? I think High Plains Drifter is awesome. So I want to check out more Clint Eastwood doing action. So I got that one. have not seen this one yet, but I've watched a decent amount of his earlier work now. Your... (laughs) <laughs> you just you saying that about Clint Eastwood reminded me of your Letterbox review. Everybody go check out Connor on Letterbox because his uh, review of that recent uh, <laughs> recent movie that he just that uh, Eastwood just did uh, made me laugh more than I've laughed at a review in a long time. Uh, he said something about like <laughs> Clint Eastwood walks up a hill in this movie, and it was the most <laughs> terrifying stunt I've seen in a long time. Uh, it was yeah. really good. Uh, it made me laugh. All right, my next two are weird ones, I'll warn you, but I had to get these because I watched them recently uh, with my son. And I also gave this one a shout-out as an honorable mention on my fantasy video. This is Alice, 
by Jean Svankmajer. Svankmajer? I don't know how to say that word. Uh, I don't want to say his last name, but he is a very awesome, talented, like some of the craziest stop motion I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if you've seen anything from this, but this is Alice. This is probably my new favorite version of Alice. Uh, it's very creepy and very claustrophobic and it all takes place inside like this room um but it's it's live action with stop motion elements and all the stop motion elements are like super creepy and this this little girl um who's who's pretty good uh it's it's this there's a english dub i have not seen the whatever the version on criterion channel is the english dub so i don't know um anything about the the original version but I really enjoyed it. It's it's super quirky and weird and kind of scary. And it says, like, the very beginning, it says, like, a movie for kids. And then it says, like, maybe or something. And it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really creepy. Um, like, I talked about it before. Like, the rabbit is, like, a taxiderm rabbit in her room. Like, before she even gets to Wonderland, it's, she's just in her room playing with toys. And, and then the rabbit, who's in a terrarium, like, he's, a, he's taxiderm. And... He just like stands up and rips the nails out of his hand and like breaks out of the ca the glass case and reaches into his chest where all the sawdust is pouring out and takes out a stopwatch and is like oh and they just like he's just like eating wood to replenish all the the uh, sawdust that's falling out of his chest. It's it's horrifying. It's 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 amazing. If you like, this would be a good month to watch it. Watch uh, <laughs> watch this movie in October. Um, because it's really creepy, and I, I watched this with my son, and he really liked it, and he wanted to watch it again recently. Um, he's like, I want to watch Alice, because we were just flimming, flipping through Criterion Channel, which I do usually on Saturday mornings with him, and I go to the uh, Saturday matinee section, which is like the family movies, and uh, he, he said he wanted to watch Alice again, so I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and buy that, because I don't know how long it's going to be on Criterion Channel, and he likes it a lot. So, uh, yeah, got Alice. And if that cover tells you anything, um, it's not like... I'm not showing my son a horror movie. It's not, it's like, it's creepy, but it, it's not creepy to him because he's a kid. Like it's, it's, it's one of the, it's like clowns, you know, like kids like clowns, but adults are the ones that think they're creepy and weird. It's like that. It's like, it's a really cool, like well-made movie and it's like interesting for little kids. But if you're an adult, it's like, wow, this is kind of creepy. Anyway, the, uh, the next one I got is another one that I watched with my son. This is... Oh, I wish I would have looked up. Okay, it says right here. Legendary Hungarian animator Marcel Jankovic. This is called Son of the White Mare. I don't know if you've heard of this. I've been going through the Criterion Channel collection that they have on there called uh, Art House Animation. This guy shows up in there twice. He shows up with this, and then he shows up um, with Janos Vites, which is Johnny Corncob, which is another really cool animated movie. I actually saw that one first, and then I saw this one. This is his more famous one. And I watched this one with my son. This is like a fantasy epic. It's like, I don't even know. It's like a fairy tale. And then it turns into a fantasy. It's like these three, like, they're, they're, it's like, God, I, I'm going to have the hardest time trying to explain this movie. You might have to just look up a, a synopsis for Son of the White Mare. But it's like these, it's like a mythic tale. There's like, um, like their, their names are like, there's like these three brothers. One's like, uh, stone breaker and one's like iron melder and and one's like tree shaker or something and, they, and they're like these mythic uh beings in this world and it, it's like they're going on this quest and they're trying to find they go to like down to the underworld and they fight these giant uh mythic beast dragon type things save princesses it's like a very um fairy tale-esque movie but the animation of it is just that's that's why it's that's why it's legendary Hungarian animator Marcel Jankovic. like the animation is like nothing I've ever seen it's all it's like all over the place I don't know if you can like this doesn't really give you a good example but it's very like abstract and colorful and it's 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 just really cool and I also recommend the other one which is actually a special feature on here Johnny Corncob oh. uh the whole movie is on here which I didn't know when I bought this I looked this up this is by who makes this I don't even know this company I just looked up uh, a blu-ray for this I have to I have to look up the company so I can put it in the description or something. But um, I looked up a Blu-ray for this, and I also looked up a Blu-ray for the other movie, and there wasn't one for the other movie. But then when I got this in the mail, I was delighted to find out that one of the special features is that whole other film. So really cool. Um, two Hungarian uh, movies, and the other one's also based on like 
Hungarian uh, folklore, like a Hungarian fairy tale. So very uh, educating for me. I didn't know any of these stories, so I'm glad I watched both of these. Uh, and like I said, I watched the second one with my son, and uh, he also wanted to. He also came running back to me and said he wanted to watch Tree Shaker again. So uh, I had to buy that one too. And I was. It wasn't a bad. It wasn't a bad price. I actually got a good price on those. So two very strange uh, animated movies that I saw on the Criterion channel. So I'm really glad for that because I would have never even known about these movies before that. Awesome. Well, my next one is a bit of a big one. So this will... I'll try to do this as fast as possible. Uh, these are three movies I don't like. <laughs> However, they fascinate me. And I know I will watch all of them again. They are... Zack Snyder's Justice League Trilogy. Oh my... This is a box set that... I have that nice is feelings. Massive. About it. <laughs> I can't believe you bought that, especially knowing you personally. That's amazing. Look, Man of Steel came out when I graduated high school. And when I first watched Man of Steel, I loved it. I have a lot of great memories tied with that. I kind of hate that movie now. And I I know there are a lot of people who do still really like that. I don't want to take anything away from anyone who does enjoy that. Um, I've never really liked Batman vs. Superman. I think, actually, the Snyder Cut of Justice League is the best movie in this. It's also absurdly self-indulgent, but I have mixed feelings Ooh, I like that on... Slip. Yes, okay, that's, that's the thing, though, right? <laughs> I have mixed feelings on this set as its own. Design-wise, it's gangbusters. It's great. It has this really neat slip to where... There's all this text that says Zack Snyder's Justice League Trilogy. It has the films listed, and then you slip it off. And it, it slides off side to side, which is pretty cool. Usually slips go up and down, but this yeah. one side to side. I like that. It's kind of unique. It's kind of cool. And I really like how these are all designed. You have, obviously, the six members of the Justice League. And then when you open it up, you have... Man of Steel, Superman poster, Batman yeah. and Superman facing each other down, like in the BVS poster. And then when you open it up, beneath the where it was Batman v Superman, now you have the Batman v Superman discs. Where there's Man of Steel, you open it up, Man of Steel discs. Now you have the Justice League poster here, you open it up, and you have Justice cool. League there. So you have a lot of discs here. You have the Blu-ray and 4K of Man of Steel, the Blu-ray and 4K of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and then the film of J Zack Snyder's Justice League is split onto two discs for both 4K and Blu-ray. And even behind each of the discs being held here, there is really cool artwork behind each of them. And as far as Batman v Superman is concerned it's the remastered one where some of the scenes are in the IMAX aspect ratios which is pretty neat also what's cool about this Batman v Superman release is it includes a new commentary which the disc did not have a commentary the original release didn't even have a commentary and on top of that uh, the the commentary that Zack Snyder did while they were on lockdown it's not that one it's a new commentary I don't know how much new information it necessarily has but that's really, really cool. And it also includes some really neat things here. If you're a fan of these, it, it, it comes with these uh, art cards. And they're not just art cards. Oh, no. Uh-oh. One moment. Hold on. I feel like this is a science experiment. And <laughs> you have to be very, very careful with this. Um, but you have the anti-life equation print that comes with it. You have, um, if you are a comic book collector, these were variant covers that came out the month that the movie started streaming on HBO Max. There's some artwork by uh, Jim Lee, oh, cool. Lee Bermejo, and Liam Sharp which my brother already owns these pieces of art as variant covers because he works at a comic book shop. 
And then even on top of all of that, you get not just portraits of each of the uh, members of the Justice League. There are these lenticular uh, sheets. They're really neat. If you're a fan of this trilogy or any one of these movies, it's a really cool set. And I am not, but I think, like I said, these are fascinating movies. The thing that kind of irks me about this, and honestly... Uh, kind of, I my heart sank a little bit when it just opened up because these things are even more fragile than Clint Eastwood is. Uh, right. <laughs> this thing, I, I, I it's too, this... it's too thick. Like it can't even the slipcover can't even hold it. It looks it's, like it's gonna tear. It's not that. It's the 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 cardstock of this this make is so flimsy and thin. Yeah. And I understand that right now. They are really trying to cut back on costs of production. You know, we both have this Lord of the Rings set from Warner Brothers here. And oh yeah, this one, you know, it's an awesome set. It is a little flimsy. Like this, like right here, the one, this corner is sort of jacked up a little bit because it, just it, from it sitting on the shelf, just yeah. from sitting on the shelf. It kind of it's not, weird. especially when you compare that to the original Lord of the Rings, which is like super hard. Yes. protective plastic so i understand they were going all out in terms of loading it with these cool print cards they were loading it with a bunch of discs they have cool artwork it's well designed it's also way too flimsy and it's the best set i've seen any major studio release for anything lately but i think it just kind of speaks to the um the conditions of where physical media yeah. is because this kind of goes back to what you were talking about with black widow and yeah. how disney's definitely cutting costs too anyways it's a cool set i'm glad i got it i will watch those movies again so that's that and that's a big one so i've been talking about that for too long what's your no, no i'm actually i'm actually very surprised that they put that much effort into that set like it was hbo max they could have just left it there like you're right. Netflix stopped releasing the Marvel Netflix shows on Blu-ray, and Disney hasn't released any of the Marvel MCU shows. Like HBO Max did not have to put that much work into it. I'm sure Snyder had something to do with it, but um, that's really cool that they did that. Even if it is a little flimsy, I'm glad that they made that for the people that that like that movie or like those movies a lot. So, um, all right, let's get into the cool stuff that I got here. I, well, my last two are really cool too, but these two. Um, are awesome. Uh, so I had to get this. I don't know if you've heard of Lottie Reniger. Um, she is an animator from like the 30s, I believe. Uh, 20s. From the 20s. Absolutely incredible stuff. I've never seen anything like her stuff. She like literally cuts out silhouettes of paper and animates them. It looks incredible. It looks like nothing else I've ever seen. This is the her crowning achievement the adventures of prince Ahmed. you may have heard of this one this is her biggest her biggest movie this is her full-length movie she did a lot of shorts a lot of little fairy tale shorts that she animated this is her first and biggest movie that she made um, i also saw this in the art house animation section on criterion channel and i loved it it is taking stories from the arabian nights and just animated it, animating it absolutely beautifully the whole thing is like black silhouettes um, cut out. I don't know if you can see that. It's very small. They just, the, this is a. This is from uh, what's that company called that you just mentioned? Uh, Kino. So they don't put. The, obviously, there's not much. It's kind of like Criterion, where the back is just text. So I can't really. Sh I w it's hard to explain what this is like without showing you some of it. Maybe I'll show some some screenshots. But it's a it's a really really cool animated movie. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen anything like it, and I had to own it. Um, but I, and I had it in my Amazon list. And then it, it left, and I've never seen this on Amazon before. It literally said, this is no longer in stock, and we don't know if it ever will be in stock again. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I need to hurry up and bite the bullet and buy that. So I went to the Kino site personally and got it from there, and uh, it was a little more expensive there, but I, it was okay. It wasn't too bad, so I got the Blu-ray from them. And then, the way Kino does it, you get like up to a certain point. If you re reach a certain point <laughs> in your cart, you get free shipping. And they got me. Because shipping was like 
eight dollars on this and i was like well goodness i can almost get a whole other thing so i searched and searched and searched for something on kino's website that i couldn't get for anywhere else cheaper and what i finally settled on is die nibelungen eh? fritz lang's monumental epic die nibelungen i have not seen this um i have only barely heard of it on letterboxd because i was looking through um fantasy movies and this is actually a two-part epic from fritz lang and both parts on letterboxd have over 4.0 um in reviews so this is like a highly regarded silent like 20s fantasy movie so i'm all in that sounds amazing it's like a dragon on the front right there and uh there's all i don't know it just it seems like it's totally my thing so i had to check it out it is a blind buy but it wasn't too expensive this however is the one that i looked up on ebay after this or during this while i was looking at it i saw it on ebay and it had a slip cover I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me get it from the source. And I ordered it, and they sent it to me like this, with no slipcover. So, kind of a bummer. But, I mean, like I said, the other Kino stuff I got doesn't have slipcovers, so it's fine. It would, it would have kind of stood out anyway if it, if it did have a slipcover. But um, excited to check this out soon. Like I said, I don't know when I'll be able to get to it now. But uh, those, those are two. Uh, I didn't even mean to do that. But, yeah, they're both from the 20s, and they're both fantasy things. So, there we go. I really need to see that Fritz Lang movie because Fritz Lang <laughs> is a god tier director <laughs> in my eyes. The dude made M. The dude made Metropolis. He makes these epic movies too. Like, I don't even know how long both of these parts are, but it had to be split into two parts, so they got to be pretty long. Um, but yeah, it looks like it sounds like it's wiggling around there. I might have to open that and make sure that's not getting scratched. My next movie is a movie that I love from. A filmmaker who used to be excellent. It is Unbreakable. A 4K oh. of Unbreakable. I am shocked it took this as long as it did to get a 4K. Mostly because Disney has been very not attentive to releasing archival stuff on physical media. I remember, I think it was last year, they said they were pretty much done doing it. Oh. allegedly I've heard rumors that they actually are going back on that I don't know 100% for sure look if I can get what about Bob in the straight story on at least blu-ray please I my copy of what about Bob it's letterboxed it is so <laughs> ugly to look at on my HD TV that movie's hilarious though but unbreakable <laughs> is great I don't know between The Sixth Sense and this which one I like more is my favorite M. Night movie. I think it's pretty evident these two, Unbreakable and The Sixth Sense, are his two best movies. But Split and Glass got 4K releases. I got those on 4K because I assumed, I guess like a jerk, that this would get one soon. I guess it did happen eventually, if eventually means sooner or later. More later than sooner. It's been a couple of years, but... Excellent movie, and the 4K remastering ain't bad either. Uh, it's one of those things where it's a very naturalistic looking movie. It has a very cool color palette, so it's not exactly making an attempt to be the most visually amazing dynamic thing, but it does look really good, and it sounds really good as well. I love this movie. I can't wait to watch all of it on this new 4K remastering. I wish I had known that was coming out because I don't own that. Um, I didn't want to get the Blu-ray because it was just like a bare bones, like jewel case, ugly looking Blu-ray. So I was holding out and then I just forgot about it. And now I should have bought that. I hope I can find one with a slip still. That looks really cool. Um, I think they also the stock on these ones were pretty good. I, I've still seen, I've seen some at Best Buys around. I don't know if it's, it's been over a week since I've been to a Best Buy, but yeah. Uh, maybe check it out. I think you can still find one. They I were okay on the stock with that. Yeah, I, I don't have a Best Buy near me anymore, so I don't usually go there very often, but I should. I also saw that Best Buy had a steelbook of the trilogy with, like, really cool artwork um, Oh, that I saw online, but I don't know. I don't. I haven't even seen the third one yet, um, so maybe I would buy that. I don't know, but I really do like a Blurk World. I think that's, besides Split, I think that those are the only two movies of his I've seen. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wait, have you not seen The Sixth Sense? I have not. 
Okay, I know you already know the twist and everything. I know, it's, that's the thing. It, no, it's still an excellent movie. It's not about what you think it's about. It's about, like, therapy and the necessity of human communication. It's a very good movie. It's, cool. it's really, really good. Yeah, I, I need to check those out. What's his other one? Signs? I like Signs. I know that's sort of a contentious one. Some people say that's where you turn into a hack. Others still like it. <laughs> I, I like Signs. I think that's a pretty solid movie about faith and the concept of faith. It's just pretty yeah. good. Cool. Yeah, I need to check those out at some point. All right, my next two also go together, kind of a pair. This is a different company. This is Blackhawk Films, which I've never bought from before. So I don't know anything about the quality because I haven't opened these yet, but uh, they look really cool. First one I got, which I just mentioned in the uh, last video we did, the uh, Criterion Corner number one that we shot, where I've talked about Georges Méliès quite a bit and how his movies just left Criterion Channel. They were there for so long. Um, so I had to buy them because I like watching these with my son. These are really cool. Turn of the century, 1900, uh, fairy tale, silent films, George Melies. If you know anything about him, you know what he does. Uh, Trip to the Moon is his big, huge, famous one that everybody knows. That is on here. Um, and I, I should have prepped for all the other ones that are on here. But it's the same ones that Criterion had. They're, they're like the ones that have been restored uh, with the big restoration a few years ago. So uh, all those are on here. This is Melier's Fairy Tales in color. Um, and it has, I think, like nine or ten uh, fairy tales on here that are all kind of short films. So I'm excited to check those out. This is kind of a weird... So this is, like I said, this is Blackhawk Films. They have this weird logo that, that goes, like, all the way across all of their <laughs> all of their things. Sorry, my lights are really reflecting that. But, yeah, that's the only thing that's interesting. You'll see it also on this one. Um, I got The Lost World uh, from 1925 which is a dinosaur movie, so I had to get it. Um, but I actually did watch this last year for the first time, and it's, it's really cool. So these are both from that company. I don't know what else this company's released. I haven't looked into them. I got these off Amazon, just searching for the titles. So I haven't gone to this Black Hawk Films specific site. It actually says presented by Flickr Alley. So I don't know a lot about this company. I need to look more into it, but it looks like they put out pretty sweet releases. They're like they kind of look like the Criterion, the same Criterion jewel cases. They're a little th thicker. They look pretty thick. I don't know if that's just me or if they're thicker than Criterion's, but yeah, they look really cool. Um, they got a lot of bonus features. This, The Lost World has an audio commentary and deleted scenes, and it looks like some other short films from this from the same director. So yeah, these are really cool. I'm excited to, to dig into these, and I just wanted these in my house so that my son could grow up with these classics. Nice. Uh, the Lost World is one of those movies I've always meant to see. Uh, growing up, I had always heard filmmakers reference that movie as something inspiring. Exactly. Yes. I, I learned about it in a film class basically right before, like, we were going through special, it was a special effect class, and uh, we were going through all of them, and it was like Lost World, King Kong, and then we just kept going down the line. So it's like, that was right before King Kong. Um, it's got It's got really cool stop motion, and we just got, like, there was, for the longest time, there wasn't a full cut of it. It was like we lost so many pieces. And I think oh. in 2012 or 2016 or something, very recently, we got the full cut. They found one in a basement somewhere, and we've got like a restoration of it. Um, and it was on Amazon Prime for the longest. That's where I watched it last year. So it might still be there if you want to check it out. But yeah, it's That's really cool. That's interesting. That's cool. I, I am a sucker for those stories of them finding old movies that have been thought to have been long lost. I, I love yeah. that stuff. Like the Metropolis is, I think, you know, one of the big examples of that where they found 40 lost minutes or something. Yeah. It's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. My second to last thing I'm going to show here is a 4K restoration of Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange. This movie is excellent. It's also <laughs> difficult. <laughs> The Blu-ray is sort of notoriously not that great. This has been having a bit of a mixed reception, too. Obviously, it's an improvement over the the picture quality is an improvement over the first or over the initial Blu-ray release. Uh, however, the sound has been getting some knocks. A lot of apparently a lot of people who have surround sound say it's very front heavy audio track. But this movie, visually speaking, has a very soft focus look to it so it's not trying to look as crisp and as detailed and as pretty as possible it's a dystopian movie 
it's supposed to look a little rougher and so it does look a little less clean than something like 2001 a space odyssey and other kubrick films but mm -hmm. it's still excellent i popped it in i thought it looked pretty good i mean it looks better than the blu-ray that's for sure and uh yeah apparently what you need to do is you just need to listen to the to the 2.0 mono track apparently that's the way to go with this particular release because apparently that sounds really good and apparently that is the original audio that was sent for this uh, but when they did try to do the 5.0 surround sound apparently that's a little disappointing i don't know i don't really have surround sound i have a sound bar uh, i'm trying to invest in better sound quality but i also <laughs> live in an apartment so i don't want to annoy my neighbors anyways that's <laughs> a clockwork orange for its 50th anniversary and i actually really like the artwork on this i think it's really yeah, cool. it looks cool try to get this closer you can see the uh sort of 70s psychedelic swirls eh, i don't know psychedelic swirls there we hey go. you nailed it <laughs> all right my last one is really cool and i haven't even told um connor that i got this he's gonna be mad at me um it's the special effects collection <laughs> all right so story behind this you know this i was trying to get my hands on this for the longest time, could not find it for like less than 120 bucks. It was, it was 100 bucks on Amazon for the longest time, and I didn't pull the trigger. And then it was off of Amazon for a while, so I was looking on eBay, and it was like 130 bucks, and I was not going to pay that much, even though it is four movies, so it's 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 a decent uh, package. But then, out of nowhere, I just happened to be looking through my wish list on Amazon a couple weeks ago. Forty dollars, forty dollars. That's hey. it. So I'm so glad I waited and didn't buy from one of the eBay sellers, but sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes if you don't buy it right away, you never see another one again, but this time I got lucky, and it's only 40 bucks. So four movies in this are, well, I'll show you in a second. So you got this nice four movie uh, artwork here, and then you got this cool little retro artwork on the back from the posters. Beautiful white spine. I love this. And the same thing on the other side. So it's a digibook. It slides out. Same artwork on the front, but the back has this really cool like comic panel layout where they're all popping out of uh, their respective boxes, which is super cool. And uh, let's get into the movie. So the first one is Son of Kong. And eh, uh, not the best, but uh, 1933. It always blows my mind that that came out the exact same year as the first I know. one. Uh, that, that, that tells you everything you need to know about it. Uh, Mighty Joe Young is the second one. Great, great movie, 1949. The better uh, spiritual sequel from the same director of King Kong than Son of Kong. Third one is The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, 1953. Really cool monster right there. And then fourth one is, of course, Them. Great, great movie. So I love two of these movies. I love Money Joe Young and I love Them. I have not seen The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms yet. And Son of Kong is a not great sequel to a movie that I do love. So I had to get this set. Um, but you can get these. I, I don't know if you can get all of them, but some of these you can get just as like standard jewel case Blu-rays. So hey, I didn't want that. I wanted this beautiful box set and I'm so glad that I finally got it. Each one has its own disc. Uh, I'm sure there's some bonus features. I had like just opened this before I started filming because I wanted to be able to flip through it on camera, but that's the last page. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. So yeah, really, really excited to, to get my hands on that. Four movies for 40 bucks. Can't beat it. <laughs> that is Go, so Look awesome. on Amazon and see if it's still on that on that deal, because I don't I don't know if it still is, but that's that's a crazy sale. If it is, I might need to invest in that. <laughs> I, I really like them. I really like them. That movie's so awesome. It's so good. I have not seen Mighty Joe Young, but you and a really good friend of mine both like swear by that movie. So <laughs> it's that great. tells you, me you'll love I will it. I, I will probably love that. I have also not seen Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. That is the movie that they basically b ripped the plot from when they made the original Godzilla. Oh! They said, yeah, we're basically just sort of remaking Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, <laughs> and then it became a little bit more than that. Yeah. But initially, the, the producer of that movie just said, make a remake of Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. <laughs> just do that. So oh, I do want to watch that, awesome. because apparently it is very influential on Godzilla. That is such a cool set. I... <laughs> I am so glad you uh, revealed that on camera. That is so cool. 
yeah, it's it's really awesome. And I didn't know that. That's I, I want to check that out just for like film historian reasons. That it's uh, that's kind of a, a proto Godzilla. That's really cool. And you know what, Son of Kong does have a, a very something very impressive about it. It is the longest seventy minute movie that has ever been made. <laughs> so that's that's impressive, you know. It started out so well, man. I wanted that movie to be great. Like. I like the it's a, direction. It's a great there. premise. It's a great <laughs> premise. It's so cool. The direction they started with, with the same actor, uh, man. And then it just just meanders all over the place. There's like musical numbers. And then like the Kong, the 11 foot Kong shows up for like five minutes. And uh, it's so disappointing. I don't know what I don't know what possessed them to put these four movies together. It seems super random. <laughs> They're like all over the place, like the 30s. All the way to fifty. Them is after fifty, so they're not even no, that, from the I think same that is era. The 50s. I think that is yeah. the fifties. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I know this is forty. Mighty Dragon is forty nine, so this is after fifty. I don't know. They're all over the place, and um, they're not. It's not even like all stop motion. Like them is in stop motion. I don't know what it, special effects. That's what that's what <laughs> unifies them. The special effects collection. So I don't know. I, I'll take it. It's cool. <laughs> that that is awesome. All right. Uh, lastly, I am going to show off something. This is something I've started to do. I think I might be touching on some taboo subject matter here, guys. So, you know, don't at me because I don't have a Twitter. Um, <laughs> so I got the Indiana Jones 4K four film collection. But here's a thing, pet peeve of mine. I hate it when they say the amount of movies that are in it. And it's like... <laughs> They just have, like, the number, and it's like, it's a four-movie collection. Um, I already owned Indiana Jones uh, on this. this yeah, awesome I have that one, too. booklet. Uh, that looks it's, much it's better. really cool. Yeah. I and it's too. largely the exact same thing. I mean, look at the artwork here. It's the same. Look at the, the back artwork. It's the same. Oh, wow. And Is it shiny? Is it glossy like the black one? It's so. What's cool about the black one is that it's it's the black one is matte with like glossy parts yeah. of the finish. It's really I love cool. That one. This one is just glossy because this is twenty twenty one. We make stuff with flimsy cardstock. Come on, <laughs> but uh, you know they have like you know this one is more you know white with a um, different colors on that red, orange, yellow spectrum, and you know it's it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I like sort of the design here when you open it up and you have the movies and you have like the, the globe behind the discs. Here's the thing that you might notice. I put the Blu-rays in the uh, in the 4K because... <laughs> You're just going to use the Digibook? I'm just using this Digibook and I just popped in the, uh, the 4K discs. <laughs> Because, I mean, look at that Digibook. It's awesome. It's so you have much better. behind-the-scenes photos. Uh, I like the black more than I like the white. It has this artwork. It's, you know, harder. It's it's awesome. Uh, but what's cool about the 4K is it included this map thing here, which has um, a map of all of the locations they go to in the movies. And wow, that's cool. it has posters of all four of the movies. And um, so what's great is... It fits right inside of this case next to the DigiPack. <laughs> so I basically just gutted this release, replaced its innards, and now I'm going to send it to Goodwill. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. You should sell it on eBay and not tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I would be liable for a lawsuit if that was the case. Anyways, uh, I actually did a similar thing with the 4K of The Sting because The Sting is the 1973 Best Picture winner. Um, I spent too much on this Digibook. Oh, to, that's uh, cool. I have this thing, but I didn't know they had a Digibook. Um, it was expensive. so okay. I did, But it had the Blu-ray and the DVD, and so I just nixed the DVD, moved the Blu-ray over, and then have a 4K in there as well. And I have the gen generic uh, 4K thing up there as well. Anyways, that's all I have, and I'm almost out of room on my... <laughs> On my card, so let's wrap that's, this sucker up. That's awesome, man. We can totally do a video about that because I used to do that too. I, I like kept all my DVDs when I switched over to Blu-ray originally. Like I, I created custom versions of the Spider-Man trilogy, which had like f all five 
discs from the DVD <laughs> plus the two Blu-rays. Um, I'll have to show those at some point because they're, they're really weird. Now there's 4K, so they're obsolete anyway. But anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, but, I, I actually... but I did do this because all of the bonus features are exactly the same. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, so you don't even need the other discs. That's crazy. But yeah, so that was what we picked up uh, the last couple months uh, after we... we I probably should, I should not have bought as much as I did after we spent so much on the Criterion uh Criterion sale. Most of that was Connor, by the way. Connor spent a lot more than me on the Criterion sale. Just, just so you know. But, um, but yeah, like I said, a lot of this stuff was for my son, and um, just stuff that I wanted to have uh, for him to grow up with. So, thanks so much for doing this video with me, man. Uh, you got some awesome stuff. I'm glad you got to show it off here. And uh, um, let us know what you guys think of what we picked up, and if you have any questions about any of this stuff, we can. We're, we're, this is why we do this stuff, so we can get information out there for fellow collectors and people who might soon become collectors so if you have any questions about anything we've showed off let us know and if you have any other stuff cool stuff that you bought and you want to tell us about or stuff that we should be on and we should be buying let us know in the comments below and uh, we will see you real soon for another video bye guys <laughs>